This is my time of year. Is it? Oh yeah, cold, brisk, clear in the mornings, warming up real nice right about now. Do you feel like this is the typical time of, kind of October weather we have in Pittsburgh? Oh yeah, I think so. Yeah. Have you ever heard that if it's beautiful sunshine on October 9th, which is today, it means a bad winter is coming? No, I haven't, but thanks for ruining it for me. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Besides being ruined? Yeah, I mean, I think I summed it up there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was holding out for like this kind of weather through Christmas or something. Not yeah. going to happen. It's huh? an old wives tale, but it could happen. I know a lot of old wives that always seem like they're right. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. What's going on friends and family? How you guys doing? Still here in Southern California at my buddy Matt's place. If you missed the last video, you should really go check it out because uh, you missed lots of cool animals and we shot off the top five and it was pretty freaking sweet. If I must say so myself, we had a lot of fun. Matt lives in this amazing apartment complex down here. If I had to live in Southern California, I would want to live in an apartment like this. I mean, there's like trees everywhere. There's streams running throughout it. You got little animals running around. It's really cool. I don't feel like I'm right next to the LAX here in Southern California, so that's pretty sweet. But today we're going to my buddy Garrett Hartle's place. And it's only about 3,000 miles away over in Pittsburgh, just across the country, no big deal. We should be there in like 10 seconds. Fresh as a daisy here in Pittsburgh. Uh, so we got Mr. Garrett Hartle, of course, that we're coming to visit. Not as a daisy. <laughs> we got Mr. Brian Gundy. We got Kim. We got Aiden. We recognize, recognize all these folks from uh, different YouTube channels and whatnot. And I'll put all the links in the description so you can find these guys. And also, don't get run over by a car, Garrett. <laughs> Garrett's trying to make me look fancy and almost getting run over by a car in the process. Uh, this is my favorite place in Pittsburgh is walk down the alleyways, but if you guys watched last year, then you'll remember that uh, the thing is, my grandfather's from Pittsburgh. I'm actually wearing his jacket right now in his remembrance. I never actually got to visit the city with him. Uh, so I, I kind of yeah, come back here once a year now to just revisit where my roots are from, some of my roots, some of my family roots. But of course, as you guys know, we're going to go to Garrett's to check out my favorite five animals at his place. If you want to see some of the, the culture and uh, learn a little bit about the city of Pittsburgh, I'll link the uh, other video that we did last year here so you can kind of go check that out if you're interested in that type of stuff, which it is pretty interesting history of this city. And, uh, I just found your favorite graffiti. Where? We thought it was back there. It's right oh, up here. there it is. This is, live, this is a throwback to last year here for you right now. <laughs> oh, there's a new one. Oh, oh. Not bad enough to sure. Now we've got multiple poop snakes. <laughs> the name of a it's all about the poop snake. Name of a new reptile business, poop snake. <laughs> <laughs> I just let Aiden steal the vlog from it. I have no idea what he said, but we're going to find out, aren't we? Hello, everyone. This is Aiden. I'm from Reach Out Reptiles and uh, I stole Brian's camera. We are at the point in Pittsburgh. Um, Brian, Brian and Kim all came to visit and we're just checking out some of the places in Pittsburgh. Follow my Instagram at the Rat God. Yes, follow me on Instagram. You will see my pets there. I have lots of them. Watch Garrett's videos at Reach Out Reptiles. Leave a like, subscribe. Woo, I promise I'm gonna take you guys and we're gonna go see Garrett's top animals. We want to come hang out. These guys haven't got to see this place like I've gotten to see it before, so we wanted them to hang out. I wanted Brian to give you a little update on the, the animals that were taken from him in San Jose. But. Yeah, so uh, two days after the theft, I received a call from a, an employee from PetSmart, and uh, evidently somebody, a man, had come into PetSmart and dropped off uh, the Burmese python and the uh, mochi ball python. And then about eight hours later, I got a, another phone call. Uh, another man came into the same PetSmart, dropped off the pied. So I now have uh, three of the five animals that were taken. Uh, don't ask me what, you know, my, the, the comment made by the guy that brought the snakes into PetSmart was that he found them in a dumpster. So we're just not sure exactly what happened, but you know, they're healthy, they're back home. Three out of five ain't bad. 
and now my camera is completely soaked. <laughs> so I just want to um, take a moment to thank everyone for everything that you guys have done. And I'm talking nationally. I'm not talk just talking the Bay Area. I've received uh, voicemail messages, text messages, emails from all, all over the world. And uh, I just can't tell you how that makes me feel, how humbling of an experience it's been. You know, all I wanted to do was get some help trying to get my animals back. And it's just seemed to have exploded, which tells me just how close and tight this community is. So guys, thank you so much. Uh, it's hard for me to tell you how thankful I am and how much I appreciate it, but uh, it, it's really heartfelt. Thank you. Straight look from at, the heart. Look at that. Hey, this guy's over here. What are these guys doing over here? <laughs> Kim, Kim, can you can you tell us about what you do and? Uh, yes, I rescue people's animals that are born with defects, and I use them for educational programs through the Island of Misfit Morphs. Link in the description. Hey, Riley. Can you show me your favorite snake here? Do you have a favorite snake? Come uh, first. Can you show me? Baby peanut. That's actually my favorite one too. This is peanut. Uh-huh. Oh, what? So we're, we're finally at the part where we're going to show you guys my favorite animals. It's tough to pick because Garrett only has super dwarves here. So it's like, it's not a nice variety like when I have it for us or like we had yesterday at Matt's. Yesterday or the last video. Matt's, Matt's video. Um, where, or, do you know where we're going? Probably oh, we got this nice Freedom Breeder shelf over here. That's what we should be using. Ah, Hello, peanut, oh, peanut what? butter and jelly. Peanut, guess peanut butter did. and jelly. Guess what I did? What'd you do? Once, um, when Dad and Garrison went to the reptile show, they ax they took everyone out, and Peanut was at it. And then they accidentally left her in the trailer, so we had to go all the way back, and they're scared. And I got hauled her all the way home. And how you doing now, Peanut? Oh, you're doing so good. Reticulated pythons do so I good. I think I might um, clean her cage. Okay, you clean her cage. I'm gonna talk about her on the video real quick. So Peanut here is what Garrett speculates to be a motley tiger golden child. And I was asking him, what? Golden child? Like where's the golden child on this animal? Golden child does not have all this crazy pattern on it usually, right? So he thinks that it's like some kind of weird thing where the golden child's just not fully expressing itself. Kind of like a, Maybe I would describe it as a, a low expression, anything low expression, I guess. So just kind of curious to see if this ends up proving out to be Golden Child because to me, I just I just don't see Golden Child. It, to, his, to his point, it doesn't really look like a straight motley tiger either. So the lighting is sucking. It's funny that Riley picked out this snake because this is actually my favorite, uh, at least, morph super dwarf that he's got here so i also want to show you um my favorite of his locality super dwarf i don't know if we'll get five snakes in this video because like it's all super dwarves and i i i i i i i, I, I make it excuses how's it going riley almost done cleaning that cage over here oh uh, yeah what do you know What about snakes? I know that some of them are venomous and they have scales and um, they use their tongue to sniff out prey or not. And that's all I'm going to That's all? Okay. That's Good. all I'm going to talk about right now. <laughs> so this here is a Tombalongan. And it's kind of a lot like a Sulawesi type of pattern, but it's in a, a more dwarf locality. I'm, I'm not sure that I'm 100% correct on that, so you guys are gonna have to go and double check with Garrett on his channel about the information I'm giving you, because he's the super dwarf guy. I'm just checking out the snakes that I think are cool. But I'm pretty certain that I'm correct in this, this being like a, a, a locality that is dwarf or super dwarf, but yet looks a lot like a Sulawesi, which is super cool. And don't go in my face, bud. Oh, that makes me nervous. But look at that really cool pattern. So, 
Maybe I should get Garrett down here to look at these and tell you exactly what's correct or what's not. Oh. Maybe you shouldn't. Oh, okay. No, I won't. So this next retake is a Halmahera. And you can see that crazy amount of iridescence. So these guys actually get darker and darker as they age. They already kind of start off dark, but I guess he had like a pretty clear belly when he was first born. And now if you look at his belly, look at all that blackness that's starting to come in on the belly. It's just something I guess that happens with these snakes. And it's just gonna get darker and darker. And if you know with retics, the darker the snake gets, then the more the iridescence starts to show through. And you can see the thickness in the lines around the pattern. It's just much more black and dark than, hey Roddy, it's darker already as it is, and it's just going to keep getting darker, I guess, as it gets older, so that iridescence will come through more. Kind of like an increasing melanin gene type of thing, but look at the iridescence on that face, man. That darkness in these pythons really helps accentuate the iridescence that comes through on them. Ooh, very, very, very cool. Very cool looking. Oh, man, that's a fantastic shot, even though the snake's blocking some of it with its face. Wow, check that out, guys. I'm pretty happy. The lighting in here isn't the most fantastic, but that angle is really highlighting the iridescence. Look at that belly too. Wow, I'm pretty happy with these shots actually. Nice, 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 nice. Look at this light. This this is the type of stuff I live for. Welcome to Pittsburgh. Um so I'm It's always beautiful. It's always sunset here. I'm gonna end the vlog here, guys. I know I only got through three snakes. We're gonna have to go over, head over to Garrett's channel and Garrett promises to show other snakes. I'm gonna give you guys a quick little snippet into this next Searchable as Reptiles podcast episode that we're about to film here. Oh, yeah. Good times. And I'll give you a little snippet of that and then we'll see you tomorrow, or not tomorrow, but in the next video whenever I get to editing this thing. Who knows when that'll be. Look at that golden light shining out of your head, dude. That's freaking amazing. <laughs> In the next video, we're going to Forrest Fanning's place, and I'm going to reveal to you guys, with no clickbait, real life, I'm actually tell you where the inspiration for the name Triple B came from. I don't it's believe it. <laughs> side of the, what, what his experience was, what the side of the story was, and just left it at that. You know, it's plain and simple. I just wanted to know. I wanted to hear it, since I've heard it from so many other people. Well, you know that what that makes me want to do. What? Watch your interview and then stop supporting you. For <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm imagining. That's what I'm imagining. Like uh, several of the comments would be, I can't believe you interviewed this guy. There's gonna be a, a number of things. I can't believe you interviewed that guy. I lost all respect I had for you. And in which case, I don't really care because if that's all it takes. But uh, I viewed, I didn't liked, want it. commented, and hit the notification bell. <laughs> <laughs> uh.